This video is about how to clean up mic bleed in your podcast interviews where you have more than two, two or more microphones set up. So uh, the biggest, one of the biggest enemies of audio is echo, and echo can come in a lot of shapes and sizes. Of course, the room you record in uh, can have more echo than another. But another way you can get echo is if you have a podcast or an interview with two or more people, so you have two or more mics that are turned on at a given time, each one of those mics is picking up everything in the room, including the person that's talking. And this is a two-person interview I just did for a podcast that I produced for the Nova Chamber Music Series. I use a Zoom H6 recorder, which records each mic into a different channel. So I'm in the left channel. My guest is in the right channel. But in this very first part where I'm doing the intro, actually, I'm also in the right channel. And that creates echo, which creates a thin, tinny sound. So go ahead and listen to this. Welcome to the podcast for the Nova Chamber Music Series, where you can learn more about the music and musicians for the Nova Concert on December 4th, 2016. On today's podcast, the pre so you can hear that echo, hopefully. You've got to put your headphones on to hear it, but that echo is caused from the mic bleed. It's also caused from, you know, part of the room isn't that great, but a lot of it is the mic bleed. And you can see mic bleed in two, a couple different ways. You can see it, first of all, down here on this lower track, that there's anything in there at all when my guest isn't talking indicates it must be coming from somewhere, and that somewhere is me. And the other way you can do it, I'll take the sum to mono off. And uh, if you watch the levels below, you'll notice the left, the top one is me, and then the, the right one, the bottom one, is the mic bleed. Welcome to the podcast for the Nova Chamber Music Series, where you can learn more about the music and musicians for the Nova Concert on December 4th, 2016. So you can see that mic bleed is pretty substantial. So there's a couple of ways that you can solve that problem. A couple of things that I do. I'm going to double click and go into the waveform view. I've already got one of these grayed out, so I'll change that back. So over here on the right hand side, you've got toggle channel enable state left and right. And what this does is if you toggle a channel out, it turns gray. And then that means any effects or anything you do to it will not affect this channel. It'll only affect the active green channel. So I'll highlight this whole part of this mic bleed of me doing the intro. And by the way, here's what it sounds like just in that channel. Welcome to the podcast for the Nova Chamber Music Series, where you can learn more about the music. And I'm going to go ahead and just turn the volume all the way down on that. And now you'll notice it's completely gone. Right? And that channel is complete silence. On today's podcast, the program preview is going to give you a brief introduction to the music. So see no indication of that at all. And we go back to multi-track here. I'll sum this back to mono. And listen, this listen to the difference it makes. Podcast for the Nova Chamber Music Series, where you can learn more about the music and musicians for the Nova Concert on December 4th, 2016. I'll go ahead and do this quickly. Pop back in here. Welcome to the podcast for the Nova Chamber Music Series, where you can learn more about the music and musicians for the Nova Concert on December 4th, 2016. So that quick little fix there. i redo that. Uh, made a huge difference in the audio quality. So one could go through the entire interview and get rid of these little mic bleed over segments by toggling these channel active states like so. You'll get to the point where you'll be able to see. Sometimes you have to listen. Um, so they are self-styled as teetering between delicate chambers. Do that and do that. One of the things you do have to be careful of is that you don't cut off... <laughs> audio that you actually want in there. So especially in this waveform view, which is destructive editing, as you know. So you'd want to do a file save as probably, or be sure that you have your original audio someplace in case you did cut something off. It doesn't take as long as you might think to go through and clean up these major chunks of audio where there's massive amounts of talking. Where you run into problems is situations like right here, where we're kind of both talking at the same time, quickly, back and forth. So you have a couple options. You can choose just to accept that, which in a lot of cases is fine because that's not a ton of time for your interview. The big chunks, if you make that sound good, that's probably good enough. So another thing that you can do is you can uh, use a gate. And what a gate essentially is, is it's a thing that it's like a, a bouncer uh, with a door. And you tell the gate, all right, this is the audio I want to let through and this is the audio that I don't want to let through. And that's usually set by the threshold, which is the dB level that the gate is either open or closed. So let's say we set a gate at a threshold of negative 24 dB. That means that unless the audio got above negative 24 dB, 
the gate would be closed and you'd hear no audio on that channel. After it gets above negative 24, then you'll hear everything on that channel. So I usually use a combination of the two of these. I'll take out the big chunks that I can, and then I'll use the gate for some of the uh, smaller stuff. I'm not very good at the gate yet. I'm still learning the gate. So this part isn't so much a tutorial on how to use a gate as it is that this is just another option that you can use, and I'll show you an example here. I tend to use the expander setting because I feel that expander over the traditional gate uh, gives you, it's a, little, it's a little bit more forgiving when two people are talking at the same time or when it comes up to that threshold, it, it doesn't sound as choppy. It doesn't cut, it's not as likely to cut stuff off. So uh, another thing I should show you about this because I do have one interview on one side and one interview on the other side is that I have set my gates up. I have set two of them up. One's just on the left channel. One's just on the right channel. And I did that because my bleed over is much louder than my guests bleed over. And his voice is a little bit more quiet in general, so I can set the threshold a little lower so it opens up and that, that reduces the chance it's going to cut stuff off. So here's what it sounds like with a gate. Welcome to the podcast for the Nova Chamber Music Series, where you can learn more about the music and musicians for the Nova Concert on December 4th, 2016. So this is the number of dBs that it's muting the inactive channel. And I will take the sum to mono off and show you that down here you can see it's doing a pretty good job. Welcome to the podcast for the Nova Chamber Music Series, where you can learn more about the music and musicians for the Nova Concert on December 4th, 2016. On today's podcast, the program preview is going to... So you can see every once in a while, that bleed through comes through with this gate. And I can't quite get the settings. If I, if I set the threshold a little higher so that doesn't happen, then there are points in the interview where it won't open up for some of the quieter comments that I have. So I'm still kind of working around how to, how to best manage that. But you can definitely hear a difference when the gate's on versus off. We'll sum back to mono. Welcome to the podcast for the Nova Chamber Music Series, where you can learn more about the music and musicians for the Nova Concert on December 4th, 2016. On today's podcast, the program preview is going to give you a brief introduction to the music that will be on this week's program and why. The guest musician... So even though it's not perfect, it's still better than what it was. So that's what I know. Hopefully that's useful to you. If uh, you have any further questions... Uh, let me know if you have any feedback, if you know how to better set up a gate for this sort of thing. I would love to hear that as well. Thanks.